this is Lady Boulay and welcome back to Black American Lineage. Thank you for your support. Thank you for subscribing to the channel, for your comments, for your thumbs up. Just thank you for coming back and watching the videos. And today I want to introduce you to an outstanding architect that you may or may not have heard of. His name is Wallace Augustus Rayfield. Wallace Augustus Rayfield was an architect and an educator. He was the second formally educated practicing black American architect in the United States. He was born around May 10th, 1874 in Bibb County near Macon, Georgia. He attended schools in Macon before moving to Washington, D.C. to live with his aunt after the death of his mother. After graduating from high school, he attended Howard University. While a student at Howard, he apprenticed at an architectural firm, A.B. Mullet & Company. He received a B.S. degree from Howard in 1896 in Classics. He then completed a graduate certificate in 1898 from Pratt Institute and then a Bachelor of Architecture from Columbia University in 1899. I think it's fair to say that this man was determined to learn the fundamentals and to master the art of architecture. While Wallace Rayfield was a student at Columbia University, Booker T. Washington recruited him to head the architectural and mechanical drawing department at Tuskegee Institute. Rayfield worked alongside Robert Robinson Taylor in establishing Tuskegee as a training ground for future black architects. After a few years, Rayfield opened his own practice in Birmingham, Alabama, where he designed many homes and churches, most famously the 16th Street Baptist Church in 1911. Rayfield was the second professionally educated architect in the United States right behind Taylor. Two of Rayfield's outstanding students went on to become famous black architects in their own right. William Sidney Pittman and Vertner Woodson Tandy. In 1907, Rayfield opened a professional office in Tuskegee, Alabama from which he sold mail order plans nationwide. He also advertised branch offices in Birmingham, Montgomery, Mobile, and Talladega, Alabama, and Atlanta, Savannah, Macon, and Augusta, Georgia. He left Tuskegee Institute and moved to Birmingham in 1908 to focus on his young practice. He was elected as superintending architect for the Freedmen's Aid Society and connectional architect of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. He died on February 28, 1941. But his reach is extensive. Wallace Augustus Rayfield designed the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama. The church served as a meeting place for many events, including the mass meetings and rallies held during the Civil Rights Movement of the 1950s and 60s. In 1963, leaders that included the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth led the Birmingham campaign to end de facto segregation in the city. Later that year, the 16th Street Baptist Church was bombed and four girls attending a Sunday school class were killed. King delivered the girls' eulogy inside the church. So Wallace Augustus Rayfield designed the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham where those little girls were killed. Of the more than 400 buildings Rayfield designed across 20 states, more than 300 are still standing, including buildings in Alabama, Georgia, and Texas. Here is just a partial list of the many buildings that he designed. He designed a lot of churches, but also state buildings. And it also puts to rest the notion that black people don't support each other. Most of these are black churches and black buildings that black people were constructing way back in the 18 and the early 1900s. So it goes back to the fact that we can support our own people if we want to. And it also highlights the fact that black people have been doing constructive things all the time. 
Now, this man is very light-skinned, and we know what happened during the slavery days and after slavery, and he is a result of that. But he is a black man. The one-drop rule was full in effect when he was born in 1874. This architect was a student of Wallace Augustus Rayfield, Vertna Whitson Tandy, and speaking on how black people have to fight for our equality and for what we want to do in America. He said, we must fight until hell freezes over and then fight on the ice. <laughs> so he's like, we don't give up, we fight. And he is also an outstanding black American architect. This is the kind of information that we have to search out because our history is not taught in a way that we can be aware of the contributions that we have made to American society. These men made great contributions. They started out designing at Tuskegee with the vision of being architects. In 1899, probably nobody encouraged them to become architects because nobody believed they could. But they had the determination and the tenacity and the, and the discipline and, and the talent to do it. And so, you know, it's just nothing to it but to do it. And so they did it. And there are many others just like them, architects, engineers, mathematicians, physicists, all kinds of disciplines that black Americans are a part of. So we cannot afford to sit down on the job. We have to keep reminding ourselves and each other that we really are a great people and we really have accomplished a great thing in a society that never encouraged us and never told us we could, but we decided we could do it. So here are some buildings that were designed by the great man that are still standing and they still look good. They look modern enough. I mean, I'm very impressed because I did not realize that this man had designed as many buildings as he did. And these buildings are clearly, they are structurally sound and done right, else they wouldn't still be standing. So congratulations to Mr. Wallace Augustus Rayfield. Job well done. Rest in peace. Thank you for listening. Let me know what you think about the video and have a good evening.